الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتابه الكريم واطيعوا الله واعطوا الرسول واول الامر منكم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran what means obey Allah and obey his messenger or follow Allah obey Allah and obey his messenger and obey those charged in authority over you meaning the leader so then there was three mentioned in that ayat who should be obeyed who are who are the three obey who Huh? Who do we obey? Allah. Allah. Uh-huh. Who else? His messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, and? And the leader. And the leader. And all throughout the books, if you go back to the old books, the books of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah, you'll find that they mention amongst all the madhabs meaning uh, regardless of the madhab and fiqh you know Imam Ahmed ibn Ahmed bin Hanbal Imam uh, Abu Hanifa who was the first of those great Imams of Ahl Sunnah from amongst the four Imam Shafi'i Imam Malik Rahimahumullah Jami'an they all mentioned that you should be obedient to the Muslim ruler and in fact you should not rebel and disobey the leader over you as long as they are calling you to that which is good meaning that which is in conformity with the Quran and the Sunnah so of course if your leader tells you to drink alcohol to eat pork to do something haram you do not obey them in that in that thing you don't do that especially if it's a Muslim leader you do not obey them in that and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran obey Allah and obey the messenger والسلام, and those charged in authority over you so Allah is the one who put that order there who commanded us to be obedient to him and obedient to the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam meaning follow the sunnah and obedient to the Muslim authority or to the authorities in general as long as it's in conformity with kitab wa sunnah and the scholars all throughout history from the early ones as I mentioned to you and up until now they explain that even the leader and you'll find this in the books Imam Tahawi uh, Aqidat Tahawiyah and all, all the books of the of the Salaf and the and those who came after them, you'll find this in their books that they say that even if the leader is a wicked leader, he's an evil leader, he does evil, he's doing sin, open sin, he's hurting the people, he's oppressing the people, that you have to be obedient to him in those things which are obedience to Allah. So if the leader is taking your money, he's stealing from you, he's oppressing you. He's killing your brothers and sisters. Those things that he calls you to do that are good, you are obey to him. You are obedient to him. And when he tells you to do haram, you don't do the haram. And something important here is Ahl Sunnah, they don't believe in rebelling. Rebelling against the uh, authority. And this is specifically related to the Muslim authority. 
that as long as the leader is still Muslim and he implements the prayer then you should not rebel against him and that is that comes from a nus that comes from a text in the Sunnah it comes from a, a text in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet والسلام, said that when he was asked about rebelling against the leader look at this this issue has been dealt with in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah والسلام. this is even before the Salaf of this Ummah before the, uh, you know those who came after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who were following his sunnah that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in Sahih Muslim in the Kitab al-Imara the chapter of leadership you'll find this where he said he was asked from his companions radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in about the leader that is uh, you know the evil leader that has taken the rights of the people and the Prophet وسلم, said, do not rebel against him. What means, do not rebel against him. As long as he implements the Salat. So as long as there is still prayer established. Or that you should not rebel against the leader. And as long as you do not find, the Prophet وسلم, said, Kufra Bawahin. Open disbelief. Meaning that the leader has clearly apostated. And you'll find that it is, is clear and evidenced by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the fire, the fire that happened. So that shows us that Ahlul Sunnah does not believe in rebelling against the leaders. And for example, we see a lot of wickedness going on. Even we see some leaders that are clearly not Muslim. For example, in Syria, uh, Bashar, and what was the case in Iraq when uh, and Saddam Hussein and the, the ulama that made takfir of Qaddafi, the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah that made takfir of them. They were not Muslim, but the people rebelled against those leaders. And even up until this day, there's still problems in those countries and fighting and killing every day. The people are rebelled and protested against uh, Bashar Assad, who is the leader of Syria now, and people are being slaughtered. Now he's using chemical weapons on the people. He's doing evil, but the people opened the door to evil by protesting and opening those doors. So the point I want to make here is bring up another point is that we also don't believe in protesting. Meaning, for example, this Monday their call for a protest in Seattle. They want all the Muslims, some of those, some of the Masajid, some of the, uh, I don't know, some of these Imams and some of these other people uh, have want to gather together and go to Westlake and have a stage of protest. And look at this, after Juma, I'm going to tell you this is true, what happened yesterday. One of the guys advertised this protest. He made, he said, yeah, tomorrow, or he said, uh, come out on Monday. We need all the Muslims together to protest against this wicked leader, uh, Bashar, and what's going on in Syria and Egypt. And he said, you know, the chemical weapons and, and all of this evil. And we agree, that is evil. And this evil and wicked slaughtering, that is horrible. And, it, and we feel pain for this. But then he said, so we're going to go protest in downtown Seattle. Well, do you think Bashar and do you think uh, Sisi or the leader the, who's killing the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood and killing other Muslims in Egypt is going to be watching what's going on in downtown Seattle? No. But rather, this protest is to get non-Muslims to act on behalf of the Muslims. So that shows that that is a kind of a pathetic state that the people are in. On top of that, the man then said, he said this, he said, we need the Muslims to come out and we need the Arabs to come out. So he didn't care if you're Muslim, Arab or non-Muslim, Christian, uh, any other type, he didn't care. All he cared about was his Arab identity, which I felt great shame when I heard this. 
and that he would have the nerve to ask for this in the masjid. And then he said, he said, Arab, he said Muslims, and then he said Arabs, and then he said, I believe, I, I, he said something about, and uh, I think he said even Christians or non-Muslims or something like this. Now tell me, what kind of Islamic action is this? You won't find anything in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet والسلام, called the people to protest. Even though Quraysh were uh, punishing them. They put hot rocks on Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu on his chest. And he said, Al Ahad, Ahad. He just said, One, one. You know, he was talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Tawheed. The Prophet وسلم, called the Tawheed. He could have accepted political position. The Quraysh, they, they offered him political position. They offered him wives. They offered him wealth and status if he wanted that. The Prophet وسلم, refused. So he didn't protest. He didn't say, We want our rights to call the Tawheed in the Quraysh society. No. But he kept calling the Tawheed. No, we're calling you to La ilaha illallah. We want to call you to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That's our goal. Our goal is not that we need. Uh, we need the Quraysh to be nice to us and just let us call Tawheed and they worship their gods and we worship our gods. La! The Prophet ﷺ didn't compromise. But unfortunately, you see the Muslims now that they believe they follow a, a different methodology, the methodology of the people who came before them, and then they begin to protest and rebel every time there's any problem. We want more rights, we want more this, we want more this, instead of going through the Sharia channels. Those are not Sharia channels, and that's the point, is protesting and rebellion against leaders, even if they're wicked leaders, even if they become disbelieving leaders, that you should not rebel and protest, and rebellion can only be if you have the ability and the other conditions that should be in place in those situations, which we don't, we didn't see in the case of Libya. We don't. We didn't see it in the case of uh, Iraq. We didn't see it in many of these other cases where the people experience a lot of bloodshed and wickedness. And to end, the Prophet وسلم, said in an authentic hadith. He said, "Alayhi salatu wasalam, sami wa ta' al mari al Muslim fi ma yuhibu wa kariya." The Prophet ﷺ said, Listen and obey the leader. In that which you love, and that which you dislike, that which you hate. As long as he doesn't call you to disobedience to Allah, to Masiyah. Because if he calls you to Masiyah to, um, to, be disobe to disobey Allah, then there's no hearing and obeying. And the ulama, they explain, that means there's no hearing and obey in that command. But not, that doesn't mean that you can rebel against him. And in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said in another authentic hadith, these are authentic hadith, these hadith, are mainly coming from Sahib Muslim. No Muslim has shaq in that. The Prophet ﷺ said what means. Listen and obey the leader. Even if he steals your money, he takes your wealth. And he beats your back, he oppresses you. Listen and obey. In, in that which is easy and that which is difficult. Even if he takes your wealth and even if he beats your back. Letting us know that if the leader is an oppressive, wicked leader, you still have to obey him in obedience to Allah. So that shows us rebellion is not from Islam. Rebellion almost always brings folda and chaos. And this is what we see in the world today, and this is what we see have seen in the past from the Khawarij and from other people who rebelled. And this is a very dangerous thing, and we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps us and helps the condition of the Muslims and helps us to come back to the Kitab or Sunnah so that way we would practice the correct methodology for rectifying our condition.